everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this DIY, I'm going to show you how to make apothecary jars using Dollar Tree products. And to start it off here, I have a hurricane from Dollar Tree. And I've already cleaned the bottom and I'll leave the skew in the description below. I have this candle holder from Dollar Tree. And I have this Voltive. It's actually a Voltive holder or a taper type candle holder. It's versatile, you can use either side. I found this at Goodwill and um, they're originally from Ikea, but these are really pretty, look at that. Okay, so to get started, we're just gonna glue the Voltive holder on top of the candle holder. And it's kind of weird the way it sits, so I'm gonna put some glue right around the edge and then right inside the lip. So now you wanna just place this right on top. It's kind of tricky, but you want your candle holder to be level. Have a small leveler. You can find these at Dollar Tree as well. All right, I'm back. It's been about three hours. So now I wanna go ahead and just glue this on top of here. Again, I'll be using my Gorilla Glue. So I'll just simply put some glue, put some glue right on top. Now it's easier for me to see the center if I do it this way. Okay, now I'll flip it back over. Alright, so I'm just turning it around to make sure that everything looks even. Okay. Okay, everyone, I'm back and this is what it looks like glued on to the base. So now I wanna go ahead and work on the top. And I found this at Dollar Tree as well. I'll leave the skew in the description below. Now this top doesn't completely fit on here. It's close, as you can see, but I want it to be a little more snug. So I'm going to take this knife Dollar Tree as well. And as you can see, there's a thread inside. I'm going to cut some threads out. Now, if you don't want to cut the threads out, you can also use a burning tool with this particular attachment and burn the threads out as well. But most people don't have one, so I'm going to show you how to do it with the X-Acto knife. So what you want to do is just take your knife and just put it right along that thread. Can you see that curling up? And just cut the thread out. Be careful. Because you don't want to cut yourself. And just continue to cut the thread out. Once you can lay it on the table and cut it. But like I said, if you're afraid to do that, then you can leave it to where it barely sits on the top or you can use a wood burning tool and burn it out. So I'm gonna cut the rest of the threads out and then come back. I have quite a few shavings here from the thread. Okay, let's see how this fits. Good, good fit. That's much better. Here's where you can be creative. I decided that I wanted to add a knob on the very top. I found these on Amazon. They come in a pack like this with two screws. Now the thing about this, these screws both are too long so you would have to go and find a shorter screw, something that would fit on the other side of this if you decide to screw it in. You could drill a hole in here or you can use a heating tool to burn the hole and do it that way. I'm gonna go ahead and just glue it down with some Gorilla Glue.
Now, I like it without the bling. Honestly, I love the black and the glass. But if you want to add some bling, here's another one that I did ahead of time. I went ahead and added some adhesive bling here and some black bling around the base. Now, this is what the black bling looks like. And you can get this from totallydazzle.com. And I'll link it below as well. You can use some regular bling from Dollar Tree or totallydazzle.com. And here's the same bling that I used to go around the base. So you just simply start in the back and wrap it around. The adhesive on this bling is really strong, so there was no need to add any additional glue. Now for the center, you can get some bling. You can get a blingy initial and put it in the center right there, or you can leave it blank and just use the chalk that's made for this and write it on there. Or you might have another idea in mind. It's totally up to you. Okay, off camera, I went ahead and added three rows of bling right at the bottom of the glass. And as you can see, that really evens it out. I really love it this way. I forgot to remove the tape from the other lid, so I'll go ahead and do that now. I think the knob really accentuates the cap really well. Okay, here's what the cap looks like in place. And I figured I'd go ahead and add some bling to it as well. So I'm going to use four rows of bling and bling around the bottom of the cap. Again, I didn't feel the need to add any additional glue. I simply wrapped it around the top and cut off the excess. And just like that, it's done. If you want to, you can add more bling to it. You can wrap the whole entire outside of the lid in bling if you want. It's totally up to you. Finally, I put the cap on top to give it one last look to make sure that I was pleased with it. And I must say that I am. So now I'll go ahead and put these on display. Come back and let you see what they look like. And here's the one without the bling. And as you can see, it's very attractive without any bling. But I must say, I really do love the addition of the knob. And I chose this knob because it's black and glass, just like the apothecary jar. And next, we have the two that I added the bling to. And these are absolutely gorgeous. So if you're into sparkles, bling, and glam, these will definitely work for you. I've displayed some Q-tips and cotton balls in these jars, but they can be used for makeup brushes, combs, or whatever else you would like to put inside of them. So if you really like this DIY and you plan on remaking these, please comment below. Would you prefer them with or without bling? And would you use these particular knobs or would you use different knobs? Comment below, I'd really like to know. And please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, share, and give me a thumbs up. All right, everyone, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.